Today we're going to continue our discussion of system archetypes and today we're going to discuss what's called accidental adversaries. This system starts with two partners uh, working to cooperate, but it leads to a negative outcome. The cooperation comes from each of them filling a, a need of the other, um, but once the cooperation, once the system is put in place, each of them independently looks to uh, optimize their part of the operation, a local optimization, and this local optimization has uh, unintended negative consequences for the partner. And as each partner feels the negative consequence of what the other is doing, uh, feelings uh, uh, erode, the partnership dissolves, and both sides feel that the other side is inconsiderate in taking advantage of them. So the classic example uh, used to highlight accidental adversaries is the relationship between Walmart and Procter & Gamble. Walmart needed um, products uh, for their shelves and Procter & Gamble needed distribution for their products. And so the two cooperated with uh, Procter & Gamble providing product to Walmart. Once the cooperative uh, relationship was in place, Procter & Gamble tried to improve their position by running a lot of specials and offering uh, sales. And this created extra work for Walmart and thereby extra costs for Walmart. Walmart, looking to recover those costs, started buying extra quantities of the discounted uh, product when it was on sale, stockpiling, and then burning through their inventory after the prices went up and selling them at the full price, uh, gaining excess profit and recovering the cost of uh, the burden put on them by the sales itself. Um, Procter & Gamble then started running more sales to make up for its loss and eventually this turned into a cycle where both sides felt the other side is wa was operating against their interests and this uh, cooperative uh, venture became an adversarial relationship. We see something similar happening inside of our organizations. Um, you use the example of the relationship between marketing and engineering. Marketing needs some uh, organization to realize their, their vision, to do the design, and engineering needs somebody to come up with a vision, uh, awareness of what the market needs are for them to execute and do their work. As marketing learns deep into a development project some new information, um, they will try feeding it into the project uh, often called scope creep, and engineering will try their best to uh, uh, fulfill uh, the new requirement. But it causes problem for engineering, it could cause a project to be late, and so engineering counters by uh, fixing the process and putting in some rigid rules such as a, a, a design or requirements or spec freeze, uh, making the process more rigid. Uh, marketing losing the flexibility process will amp up its early requirements, will uh, put in stretch goals instead of their real goals, believing that uh, if, if engineering can reach these stretch goals, they'll still have a strongly competitive product in the marketplace. And this cycle repeats itself, and marketing and engineering find themselves in an adversarial relationship. The antidote for an adversarial relationship for this systems archetype is dialogue, continuing dialogue about the cooperation through the entire life of the system, not that dialogue would end once the original system is in place. Um, this means that there needs to be dialogue, ongoing dialogue between engineering and marketing. This is part of the design of the interface between the two groups. And to come full circle, design of the interface is one of the key elements of systems and systems thinking, the topic that we're heavily focused on in this video series.